Hi, I'm Bob in Osterhout. Um, this video uh, addresses uh, the obstacles that uh, often come up when learning the natural rhythmic breathing. And I use the term natural rhythmic breathing now rather than diaphragmatic breathing, uh, which is the term that's, uh, that's used in the text, uh, because diaphragmatic breathing has a lot of different interpretations. People use different methods and different rhythms and hold breath and things like that. So there's not a consistent definition and I don't want that to be misleading. So uh, the natural rhythmic breathing involves the movement of the diaphragm. It's our natural mode of breathing uh, so that it's three to four seconds up, three to four seconds down. And the reason that's important important is the right vagus nerve which passes through the center of your body, it's about the size of your thumb, passes through the diaphragm through an opening in the center towards the back and it moves right through there. Okay? When you have the diaphragm moving at that natural rhythm, okay, you're stimulating that nerve and that activates the parasympathetic nervous system. When your parasympathetic nervous system, that's the part of the nervous system that handles the maintenance of your body, okay, that digests your food, helps you to recover from whatever is going on, fight off disease, keeps you healthy. When that part of the nervous system is activated, you stop building up stress immediately and now you're recovering from what's happened before. So that's a very critical part of eliminating anxiety, dealing with stress, making good decisions because our mind becomes more narrow, fully focused when we're when we're dealing with in a stressful situation. So it helps in a lot of different ways. So it's very important to, to be able to establish this as a habit and to use it in any moment. And even two or three breaths can make a big difference. If I'm starting to tense up and I just go, <sighs> the second breath was a natural rhythmic breath and that stimulated my parasympathetic nervous system. Now that takes some practice. You want to recover from built up tension first, but then maintaining it becomes much simpler. Okay? So we're going to identify some of the obstacles and Mary has volunteered to, uh, to uh, help us with that. And so I'm going to explain to her how to use the diaphragmatic breathing and, and we're going to work with the obstacles as, as they become evident. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to have you to do is to sit with your feet flat. Okay? And I want you to move your pelvis all the way to the back of the chair. Okay? Now the reason we're doing that is because we want your pelvis to support your spine and we want your chair to support your legs. Okay? If your feet are up, you're using your muscles to hold them up. If you lift your heels off the floor, you're using your muscles and we don't want your muscles working. We want you in recovery mode because muscles working when you're not doing an action build tension. Okay? Now I'm noticing a little pattern where your shoulders are lean forward and that's very common with students and people on computers and you lean in. I have the same pattern myself that I have to pay attention to. So what I'm going to have you do is to raise your shoulders up, bring them back and let them drop. Yeah. Uh, raise them up again, bring it back and just let them drop. Don't pull them down. Just let them drop. That's it. Good. Good. Okay. Now your skeleton is holding you up. Okay, your muscles are having to work less. Okay? Now I simply want you to pay attention to your breathing and allow it to become a little bit deeper with each breath. Okay? Don't try to force it or control it and don't try to make your belly move out like I showed, but just allow it to become a little deeper with each breath. Okay. And if you could put your hand on your abdomen, it'll be a little bit easier to see. Okay. That's pretty close, but there's, there's something we need to correct here, and, and there's two issues uh, that are important to point out, okay? Uh, you've got movement outward, but it's, it's coming uh, in a little bit, there's, it's, it's, uh, it's coming halfway through the breath instead of the beginning of the breath, okay? okay? So that we want the air to come all the way to the bottom of the lungs at the beginning of the breath, and then to move it outward. And there's another common issue that I want to describe here that's very important, is when people breathe, um, it often looks like this when they first try to start the diaphragmatic breathing. It goes, okay, and the hand is moving up rather than out. You notice Mary's hand was moving out, but not in a real nice rhythm, okay, that, that eventually we'll get to, okay. But when it's moving up, then I'm really breathing in the upper part of the lungs and I need to let it come down lower so that it moves out. So yeah, just allow that to, to move out. And gradually eliminate the pause between the inhale and exhale. So as soon as you're done breathing out, start breathing in again. No, I'm thinking. Okay. 
Okay. It's a little bit forced, and there's another approach that can happen, particularly if you're not getting any movement at all outward down here, and that's to put a rolled up towel behind under the shoulder blades, okay? And then kind of lean back over that, okay? What that does is it lifts the body so the diaphragm has more room to move and it makes it harder to hold on to tension that's there. Okay, now put your hand there and let's watch the breathing. Okay, I am breathing with Mary so that I feel what she feels, and what I'm feeling is that she's trying to breathe that way. She's trying to be helpful to me, which normally I would appreciate, but in this time, it's, it, and, and it's a common thing. When we, when we try it, we want to get it right, but you notice I just tensed my, head, my hand when I said that, and so that creates tension. So what we're going to do is give her mind another place to go, that, but give a phrase that, that establishes the rhythm of the breathing so she can think about that and not try too hard to do the breathing. So as you breathe in, just silently, or you say silently, I'll say it out loud to help. You say silently, moon and stars, as you breathe out, peace and calm. And I'll speak it with you, I'll follow your breathing and we'll get the rhythm established, okay? Peace and calm. Moon and stars, peace and calm. Let your shoulders just hang from your head, let them relax, let your jaw relax. Peace and calm. Moon and stars, peace and calm. Moon and stars, peace and calm. Just allow it to come with my voice. Don't try to help it. Moon and stars, peace and calm. Moon and stars, it's okay, I'm out of rhythm. Peace and calm. Peace and calm. Moon and stars. Let it come all the way to the bottom of your lungs. Back over this. Don't help me, okay? Just allow the natural to take place. Peace and calm. Moon and stars. Peace and calm. Moon and stars. Peace and calm. We haven't quite got it. Eventually, if we work with that, we could get there, but there's another technique that will help with that, okay? That if these aren't working, we'll take it to another level. And we're going to move to uh, uh, where we can change positions, move to a gurney to demonstrate that, okay? Mary is now laying down on her back, and this is a position that is helpful to use if, if none of the other approaches in removing obstacles to the natural rhythm of breathing seem to be working. Uh, this is the easiest position for that natural rhythm to come through, what I'm about to show you. And all you need to do, Mary, is to bring your knees up and put your feet flat, okay? And your feet are pointed in just a little bit, so I'm just going to turn them out, and I'm going to have your knees come together just a little bit. So again, we're maintaining that balance, so there's no muscles that are working and the skeleton is holding her up. And just simply do what you remember from the breathing. Let your jaw relax. Let the gurney hold you up. And just allow the breathing to, to do what it wants. This is how your body wants to breathe, and just let it do that. Moon and stars, peace and calm. Moon and stars, peace and calm. Moon and stars, peace and calm. Okay, did you notice a difference from those after those three breaths? Yes. Okay, okay. Within three breaths, you can feel the difference in the natural rhythmic breathing. There's a sense of calm and ease, which I assume is describing what you feel. That means she stopped building tension. She wasn't building a lot before, but, but she's gotten into parasympathetic mode and now is in full recovery, okay? But if that wasn't working, okay, and there's some situations, and, and we're getting fewer and fewer that, that I've seen these obstacles. Uh, this one I've done maybe a couple of dozen times, and it, it works with children. And uh, one situation I'm thinking of, there was a, uh, a woman who was incoherent and having panic attacks. Uh, and um, her mother brought her into urgent care. And they brought me in. And, and obviously, I couldn't talk to her about what to do. She was, she was freaking out too much. Uh, so this is a, a technique. And I actually had her mother do this. Um, but I usually use a towel. 
uh, just, just to, with respect or a blanket. And it makes it a little easier to see. And if I'm working with someone, if a parent is there or, or a, a someone, a trusted person, I'll, I'll have them put their hand on the abdomen and I'll put my hand on top of theirs just to demonstrate what to do. And all I do is I just pay attention to the breath and at the exhale, I'd very gently give it a help, little boost. And then just remove my hands gently. Very slim. And I do that every two or three breaths. And basically what that does is push the air out of the bottom of the lungs and make a little bit of a vacuum and makes it easier for the diaphragm to move on the next breath. Okay? So that's the next step if nothing else is working. Uh, the last um, step I've only, quite frankly, used three times in my career in counseling. Uh, it, it's, it's only been in very extreme situations where people have had been through a lot of trauma or a lot of difficulty. Uh, but this one has always worked, if nothing else does, okay? So what I'm going to do is grab a hold of her legs and pull them down, okay? And I keep her in balance so the feet aren't turned in or turned out and I'm not using my muscles to pull. It's very important that I remain relaxed. If I start stressing out or building tension, she will sense that and that will create tension in her. Okay? So all I do is just lean back very gently. Okay? And then I breathe and relax and I watch her breath. Moon and stars, peace and calm. Moon and stars, peace and calm. Okay? And that may take uh, three minutes. I don't think it's ever taken five. Um, basically, what you're doing is we tend to tense up when there's a tension. There's a common pattern of tension. This makes it impossible to tense up. Okay, you, you'd have to fight against me to tense up. It's a very gentle pull, and it's not a pull with the arms. It's lean, it's grabbing hold, just gently leaning back and observing what's happening and seeing that it's relaxing. Okay, so those are the major obstacles to dealing with natural rhythm, myth, rhythmic breathing. Breathing, I'm sorry. And so, if you run into any problems, or if you're teaching it to someone and they're unable to learn it, uh, one of those or a combination of those will tend to resolve the problem. Okay, thank you.